It says going live. It says going live. It says we're live. Dear it God, says we're live. it says we're live. Are we live? Tell us, please. If any of the, if anybody out there is getting this signal, please let us know that you can hear us. This is researcher Theron Sherman and researcher Dark Stuff, and we are mm-hmm. trying to stream in the middle of the apocalypse. We're quarantined, <laughs> and the technology is not working with us today. No, it must be all this internet infrastructure that's going down so people keep dying. If you are in the chat, please tell me if you can hear me, and please especially tell me if you can hear dark stuff. Because if we can't hear dark stuff, well, that all of this will have been for naught. That is very true. Kill us under can hear me. That's step one. Yes! Can you hear me? I'm talking. Can you hear me? Hello? 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 I don't know what the delay between this app and YouTube is, so while... We wait for a response to maybe if we can be heard or not, or if you can be heard or not. They can hear me. Ha! They got me. I'm going to enjoy this anomalous fluid. Oh, Mm. I can be seen. That is also an upgrade. But can you hear dark stuff? That is the most important thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes! You're here. We're all here. I'm here. Yay! Hello, Kill Asunder. Hello, hi there. Hi there. Hello, hi there. Dillagaff is here. Welcome to the stream. Insanity Major is here. We are all here. The mic is up. Dark Stuff is here. We have seven concurrent viewers. Everybody, welcome to another anomalous broadcast of Site42 with new technology that is so much better than it was before. Say hello again, Dark Stuff, now that we know the show is actually happening. Hello. Uh, And sorry about my typing. You can probably hear my typing. We can, in fact, hear your typing. All right. (laughs) I will. I'll. Well, I'll. You know what? I'll just type the very short thing that I have to type when I go on mute later when you talk, and then it'll be done with. I can, I can Fantastic. In the meantime, proper greetings to the audience. Hello there, Site42 viewers. This is Foundation Staff Theron Sherman. You can call me Sherm. Welcome to another anomalous broadcast from Site42. For anybody Woo! unfamiliar with our show, here's the rundown. Number one, I read you an SCP document. Number B, I open up the floor of the community <laughs> to discuss B. what we've read. Uh, we're often visited by SCP authors, staff, fans, and if we're lucky, the article, the author of the article of tonight shows up to share some insight. Remember to shoot us questions in the chat. I will continue to keep checking. So if you have questions or comments on the story, I will check in at the chapter breaks. Uh, especially remember that if you like the stream, do all those YouTube things you're supposed to do, like liking and sharing and subscribing and Patreoning and things like that. Uh, Insanity Major asks why there wasn't a stream last Sunday. Well, that is a very good question, and I will explain that. Last Sunday, I got furloughed. I became unemployed from my full-time job, and so we panicked, and I had to figure out how I was going to work. Thankfully, I managed to get approximately half of my day job into work from home uh, professionally when I'm not here at the foundation. I teach ballroom dancing for a living. And so I somehow managed to adapt all of my YouTube gear into live streaming ballroom dancing classes for about half my students. And so we're in better shape than we were last week. Hallelujah. You can see the quarantine beard is going. Well, as much as I can grow, I'm 33 years old and I haven't hit puberty yet. Uh, But yes, so I'm glad we're back with tonight's Chapter of Venda Friend. We missed it last week, but I'm glad we're moving on to Chapter 3 tonight. And we are once again graced with the presence of Dark Stuff. Hello. And so going into Chapter 3, which is called I Don't Get It, I Functioned Before. Do you have any prep for us before we go into it? Um, I am curious to see what you will do with the last section. That's all I will say. All right, I look forward to the last section. In the meantime, let's all have a toast to surviving the quarantine. Our anomalous Woo! fluid is at the ready. Mm-hmm. And let's begin the story. Chapter three. I don't get it. I functioned before. 
My foot throbbed. I had never dealt with that much blood, and I couldn't really move my foot. I was crumpled on the couch, and the two kids were playing with the huge tubs of Legos behind me. Cinnamon buns, warm blankets, some reassuring words, and the Aquabats had finally managed to calm them down. I was sure there was a med kit somewhere in the house, but I just hadn't the time to find it. The worst thing that could have happened was an amputated foot, and really, wouldn't that just be interesting? I thought it might be another quirk for me to have. A new nickname, perhaps. Footless Fool. Half a calf. Footloose. No. No. I was making myself angry thinking of all those. A nickname doesn't define a person, and you never really got to choose them, did you? Some bloke would name a trait of yours and you would forever be painted with it. Brainy Brian. Was all of me just smarts? No. No, it wasn't. I was a person. I was a gosh darn human being. And I deserve more recognition than Brainy Brian. I was Brian Harding. People should have just called me Brian. I liked the name Brian. It was tough, but didn't make me sound like a jerk. Someone who could stand up for themselves, but didn't take it as far as pushing others down. Brian. Strong-willed. Intelligent. Kind. I rescued two kids from certain death that day. If it weren't for the bullet in my ankle, I'd have been riding high on self-esteem. The two kids were Joe and Abe. They didn't really know their last names. They didn't want to talk about the scary girl who was holding them hostage. They didn't want to talk about the blue muscular man who shot me in the foot. He was mean. He must have been such a mean person. Who shoots someone in the foot? A big hunky meanie, that's who. I, it took immense effort to lurch myself over the back of the couch to peer at the brothers. What was I going to do with them? I never planned on being a parent. I loved kids, but... But I love them at a distance. I love making toys for them. I love getting money for it. I laid back down. Was I a bad person? I was an employee of Wondertainment. And I was a toy maker. It was impossible for me to be a bad person. Couldn't be. Still, Wondertainment had left a bad taste in my mouth. Polly Gary Ashley getting away with all she did without a scratch. Without a scratch, yeah, and I got shot. I wasn't good at biology. For all I knew, I could have been bleeding out. Not much I could do about it at that point. Just put pressure on the wound, like I was always told, and sat there. I thought to myself... Not much I could do about it at that point, just put pressure on the wound like I always, like I was always told, and sat there. Should that be, and sit there? Like, present tense? Yes, yes it should. Wow, thank you. I'm Yay, I'm helping! <laughs> Can, One second, and sat there. See that? There. The YouTubers provide a service. Okay, save, and reload the page. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen in the audience, while I'm taking a break for him to fix the uh, fix the story, well, could have right. never guessed that to be your job. Ah, thank you. Yes, ballroom dancer. That's shocking. Yeah, I didn't think that would be my job either. I never wanted to be one. It was a surprise. It was an accident. Cheers. hey -o, Hello. And shall we continue? I think yes. I think yes, too. All right. Big meanie. Immense pressure. Love making toys, sit down, there we go, and sit there. I thought to myself that I should get Joe and Abe to their parents. But how? I already asked them, and they didn't know the phone number. Tongue usually knew what to do with these things. Tongue usually knew what to do with things. Eh, I didn't feel like talking to Tongue. They were my kids. I was going to give them the best life they could have. They were going to live happy and free, and they were going to eat ice cream every night and watch cartoons until their heads melted. I was never going to cook them broccoli or spinach or any other nasty green slop. They were going to eat like kings, the kings of Candyland. They were going to feast on candy canes that I grew in the backyard and lollipops that I picked off the trees. They were always going to get two spoonfuls of sugar in their teas. Joe and Abe. Joe and Abe Harding. It rang well. It rang true. 
I could be a mommy too. Whenever they fell down, I would be there patting them reassuringly on their back. We could play hide and seek, except all over the world. Egypt one day, Spain the next, Brazil the third, India the fourth. We could go visit ancient temples, maybe Stonehenge, some skyscrapers. The possibilities were endless. Just as soon as I could walk. Huh. <sighs> I was sick of laying on the couch and thinking about myself. I didn't like thinking about myself much anyways. I was going to walk no matter how much it ground my shattered ankle to pieces together. I was going to walk no matter how much it ground my shattered ankle pieces together. The carpets cleaned themselves anyway. Whoa. It was snowing. Snowing? What was the weather in this place? I got up and winced as I shifted my weight over to my left foot. I looked over at the kids who stared at me with wide eyes. They must have still been shocked from the experience. It made sense. I don't imagine you get through something like that without some scars. They would heal in time. I would make sure of it. Had I packed anything healing? I feel like I must have. I stumbled into the kitchen and made my way back to the door where I had left my suitcase. I had never unpacked. <laughs> Fell asleep unexpectedly early last night. I balanced myself on the walls, feeling the warm liquid drop down to the sole of my foot and then follow it to my toes. I almost slipped on the tile floor, but caught myself on the counter. The first aid kit is usually in the kitchen anyways, right? Holding onto the counters and leaning at nearly 45 degree angle, I finally arrived at my suitcase and leaning at a near 45 degree angle. Uh, that was not a mistake of the text. That was a mistake of me. I finally arrived at my suitcase. I knelt down and opened it. There were my changes of clothes. How did my makeup look? My pillow, my blankets, all my face paint, and, oh, my whisper doll. I tripped and fell last night. I must not have taken it then. I missed a dose this morning. My heart fluttered. I missed two doses of Risperdal? Oh no. Oh my, that was bad. I was told to take a dose each morning and night, and I hadn't missed anything since I was 13. It had been so long, I didn't remember what was going to happen. I started twitching and picked at the childproof cap of the bottle. What went wrong? What happens when I go off of them? What am I like without them? Am I still brainy? What if I took them now? What is the worst that could happen? What if the kids found out? What if management found out? What if tongue found out? I emptied it into the sink. I wondered if the car worked. I hadn't checked out the car yet. I stepped outside into the snow and grasped my keys. It was cold. I wasn't dressed for cold weather. Wasn't I? I had gone out into the rain just eight hours ago. I should have been prepared. I closed the door and locked it behind me. Who knows what kids could do if they had the free roam of the outdoors. They were safer inside. The cold felt good on second consideration. It felt good to be cold. My left foot wriggled its toes into the snow and enjoyed how they felt bitten. The tips of my fingers began to feel the same way just sitting in the air and catching snowflakes. The metal tip of the keys felt like ice. The same keys that opened the house and took me back into the tourist trap also ran the car. Wondertainment was efficient, if nothing else. If nothing else, indeed. I collapsed onto the shiny pink and white hot rod, had my unresponsive fingers fumble the keys into the car door, and then clambered into the leather driver's seat. The whole thing felt like a fridge. A freezer, really. I shut the door and laid down across the... the... the middle bit. Between the driver's seat and the passenger seat. This thing it didn't self-clean, apparently. I was still leaking? It was definitely less now, but I thought it would be none. I turned on the car and started up the heat. My breath shuddered and came and went. Well, I sure had done it. Moved myself from my couch and into the car. From thinking about myself to thinking about myself. What a good job I had done. I punched the steering wheel and heard a satisfying honk. Very satisfying, actually. 
I punched it three more times before my hand ended up resting on its outer edge. Whew. I was dizzy. Dizzy and warm. I felt like myself. I hadn't really ever noticed that I didn't feel like myself before. I was feeling fresh and springy. My anger subsided and began to replace itself with contentment. I really did just need a change of scenery. Up into the wilderness. Up into the tourist trap. Back to my old house and out again. It's funny how much life changes over short spans of time. Just three days ago, I was in Wonderworld. And now I was out in the middle of nowhere. No, the middle of everywhere. And I'd become a completely different man. Or maybe I was a completely different man before. And only just now did I get back to being me. I was getting very tired. Chapter break. Let's check in on the chat. And my first comment is, Oh dear God, he poured out his medicine. And that's not going to go well. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I have to be honest. I I don't see your stream on your channel. Apparently people have because people are there, but I don't see it. So. So. So I can't check the chat is what I mean. Oh, wait, wait. Found it. I'm going to mute it. Found and then it. I can check the chat. Found it. All right. He did make what's, it to the chat. Brilliant. All right. What's Brainy's country of origin? Um, I hadn't really considered that before. In my head, he was very tall and pale, so I'm going to imagine European of some sort. Tall and pale, European. Because everything anomalous that's tall and pale makes me go straight to somewhere like Transylvania. Something like <laughs> that in my head. Yeah, so that's, I never actually thought about it, really. It's amazing what details, like, you think of so many things about the character and you're like, but I didn't think of that. Mm-hmm. That's a good question, Sanity Major. And again, friend, thank you for suggesting this tale series because I'm having a hell of a lot <laughs> of fun with it. It's, it's a fun time. I think, in my humble opinion. <laughs> All right. Let's have one more sip of our anomalous fluid and go on to the next chapter section, section of the chapter. Mm hmm. Mm. While I read, remember that if you're liking the stream, do the shares and the likes and all that stuff. And anomalous fluid complete. Section chaptered, and <laughs> here we go. All right. I stepped out of a train and onto the sidewalk. It chugged out from behind me, off into the blurry nothingness, and left me at the base of a large building that was hundreds, if not thousands, of floors high. Its walls seemed to jut out at odd angles, and floors hung in midair where they were sure to fall, but didn't. The walls were pinks and purples and bright baby blues until they reached into the gray storm clouds and up and beyond and even that. And beyond even that. I walked towards the large enamored archway, past the black landscape and through a pile of dark crates and barrels that surrounded the entrance. Once inside, I was able to look up into the dimly lit skyscraper and see that I was surrounded by stairs that spiral up and up and up through spacious, wheezing art galleries. I only saw two or three other bodies, but they were too abstract to make out. I took to the first I took, yeah, I took to the first steps and marched up them with solemn gait and lazily scanned the bright and bubbly surroundings. Every wall was covered head to toe in paintings and explanatory gold plaques. You could barely see where the wallpaper in some place, you could barely see the wallpaper you could barely see the wallpaper in some places. There were glorious depictions of wars, love, children, sex, and music, and death, and merriment, and depression, and nature, and wonder. Purples and yellows flooded over the blues and greens and oranges and reds. I kept descending and noticed more and more sculptures, 
tan things with curved and curves and motions that I couldn't quite make out. They seemed to come from all different times and all different styles. Some were made of marble and others out of paper mache. Some were purely realistic and others were warped perception itself. Occasionally, occasionally, eventually I reached the top, maybe, and looked over the bleak pitch hills and valleys and mountains covered in gray mists and obscured by passions and low hums. I held out my arms and felt the winds thrash me and almost pull me off the top of the amazing building. And I screamed at the stars just out of reach. I screamed at the art I've never made, at the people out to get me, and at the coldness on my skin. Suddenly, I was looking at a painting. It was small, and it showed a single sandstone building in the midst of a large plateau. A long glowing pathway extended from it and slithered off into the distance. The plaque read, The Road from Here to Everywhere Else, by Sam Michaels. To everywhere else? Where was here? I strolled through hallways with chipping paint and wrung my hands together in nervous lethargy. I plowed through the thick air, stepped through what felt like honey and mud. Determination drove me, fueled me, ebbed and flowed through me. I tasted vomit, I smelled blood, and I saw my creation. It opened into a large concert hall, and there she was, playing a piano. Vines and flowers and grasses wilted around her as her long groping fingers tapped spiritlessly on the birch keys. Her deep, hollow eyes glanced up at me, and then she hunched more over her plagiarism. I wasn't angry anymore. I seemed to shrink, or she seemed to grow. And I came close to her and had her knee come up to my neck. She stared empty. Uh, she stared emptily at me, and I clambered into her lap. I laid there, and I felt like I was disintegrating. I closed my eyes. I let myself turn to dust. It was peaceful and dark, accepting even. I had let loose. A pain in my chest released, and I fell into nothingness. An abyss with small, fleshy, shifting, sparkling blue and red stars peered back at me. I was vaguely aware of some loud, piercing white noise, but it subsided into calmness once again. There was only absence. No words. No thoughts. No feelings. Just a burning. I plunged a hand straight through her chest. It pleased me that she coughed and choked, and at her dark, empty eyes widen, and her mouth fell open. She held my head weakly as I grew and reintegrated and overpowered her. I took her head and slammed it on the keys, making a cacophony of cluster cords. Her blue, pale skin was like, a, was like paper versus the wooden surface, tearing and stretching and giving in. The hall echoed with sweet, dissonant song. I pulled her above my head, dug in with my claws, and pulled her apart like two rings at a magic show. Fleeks of her floated down like confetti. I heard a clapping, and then another, and more, and more, and more, and more. I turned, and the stage lights blinded me, but I could see more and more silhouettes standing up in the audience, a standing ovation for me. What a beautiful performance. Bravo! Bravo! The rest sat down. Who are you? A great doctor, or so I've been told. And you? I'm Brian Harding. You should get into acting. It wasn't acting. Oh, well, it isn't now. You let her perform. And what a jolly good show it was. 
he laughed and laughed. And then they all laughed and laughed and laughed. They were laughing and they were laughing at me. Their fragile diaphragms wriggled and squirmed and bounced around just to show me, just show me just how much they cared, just how much they cared for me. I growled and lunged into the crowd. Whoa! Whoa, that's a chapter break. And damn, buddy. Damn. Sorry, I thought that that was the last section of the chapter, so that's why I, at the beginning of this, said I'm curious to see how you do the last section. I forgot that it's actually one short thing after this one. That was awesome. Thank you. I think that's one of my best dream sequences I've ever written. That was so much fun. <laughs> right? I have no idea what it sounded like in your head as the author, but I definitely saw my, like, my brainy Brian going farther and farther Mark Hamill Joker, and I just kind of went with it. <laughs> no, yeah, I heard that in your voice. It was... And then, I don't know why the doctor is British, but the doctor is now British. Gotcha. But fop British, which is a very specific type of British. Mm, faux British, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the uh, blah blah blah, in the chat, C Jops made it. C Jops, I'm glad you made it. Uh, Volpes Inculta asks, "What's happening here? This is Venda Friend Chapter Three. We are halfway or two thirds through the tale. Enjoying a good live stream, hanging out." Oh, yes. C-Jops upvoted it. Good. It was at plus 53 when I saw it earlier. Thank you. Remember, That's always awesome. remember, I will say it every time when you come to this stream. If you like the story, upvote the story. If you like the video, upvote the video. Upvote the video. Yeah. Upvote all the things. All the things. I'm trying to see if there are any questions. Bravo, bravo. And always, if you have any questions for me or, in this case, Dark Stuff, who is here tonight, the author, then you can ask those while we take a small chapter break and drink our anomalous fluid. Yes. Our maybe, maybe not incapacitating fluid if you have too much of it. It could be anything. Who knows? <laughs> It is definitely a monetization safe fluid, YouTube. <laughs> Precisely. I was about to say perhaps a little more about it, and then I realized maybe why we were calling it anomalous fluid. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, God. Like two or three years ago, I did a Christmas live stream using the Discord and old, like, cell phone live stream technology. And. Mm -hmm. I put a fake fireplace on my TV behind me and read like Christmas SCPs for three hours. That sounds very nice. And drank scotch for the entire time. It was a good party. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good party. What's in the fluid? Siege Jobs asks. Well, although I am certain that it is monetization safe, YouTube, pay attention, I would say that it is reserved by a company going by the name of Woodford. It is... Reserved by a Woodford. It is a Woodford reserved anomalous fluid. Speaking of actors, Insanity Major has a group of interest in the works that is a play company. I would be so excited. I Ooh. am all about that immediately. All right, we have a little more of this story left. Why don't I knock this sucker out? Let's do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And. Make sure this is a letter from Brian. Da -da -da. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to do a whole letter from Judy the Tongue. Oh, thank you, Dark Stuff. You're Thank you so, for that. So welcome. <laughs> I'm so excited to do that for an entire letter. 
Okay. Dear Judy the Tongue. Dear Judy the Tongue, I must once again apologize for my behavior at our last meeting, but I'm proud to announce that I am feeling much more myself again. I had never realized how much stress I was putting myself under being constantly hard at work on a new toy all the time. Getting out and seeing the world via the tourist trap has been a much-needed break for me, and for that I must thank you dearly. It has really been a wonderful time. That being said, I have found myself struck sick. Now, it's nothing to be worried about, just a bit of a cold, but it means that I just don't have the energy to be out and about in the world right now. Being stuck at the tourist trap has been a little boring this past week, and I am finding myself striving for something to do. I thought, hey, what is my most favorite thing to just sit down and do? That would be what I always do best. Make toys! Just sitting in bed, I've begun a myriad of ideas that I am eager to begin working on. Looking around the house, I think I have enough materials to start making a prototype of one of them. And isn't that exciting? However, in following with protocol, I thought I should ask you if I could begin working on a little something or other. Wouldn't want to use Wondertainment Resources without permission now, would I? So this letter is a formal inquiry into whether I, Brainy Brian, am allowed to use the miscellaneous materials in the basement for the creation of an exciting new product, Vend a Friend. No child should be without a friend. And imaginary ones only go so far. I am campaigning to make a toy that acts like a person, but has the sole intent of being your child's very bestest friend. It alters its, it alters its personality to better match the child's. It teaches your child emotional availability. And it plays whenever your child wishes to play. It is the perfect friend that every child deserves. And it would cost... And it would only cost... Well, you know. We don't know how much it would cost yet, but I'm projecting, say, $140. A bit costly, but, well, it needs a consciousness inside it, and that just isn't cheap, you know? Anyways, I've been sitting all sniffly all day. No, that is what it is. I've been sitting all sniffly all day, and I'm just so eager to hear back from you. I hope that you might allow me to pursue my best interests. Love you always, Brian Harding. Uh, dear Benny, that sounds death sentence. Of course, I long to be if I am bending from wolf. You are supposed to use one to ten of resources to make toy prototypes until the idea has been approved at one of our monthly presentations. However, you haven't had your rest go of it, and we always enjoy what you make us. So I'm going to pull a few things for you and say yes. It sounds like a perfectly wonderful, heartwarming idea that will bring smiles to the faces of children across the globe. I hope you're all reading along on the page. I love you, dark stuff. I'm unmuting for just a sec so that people can hear how, <laughs> how much joy this brings me. <laughs> all right, back to it. How you get these great and later ideas time after time is beyond me. I'm glad to hear you're holding up in any case. You should know that we didn't worry about you up here. Lots of people fearing that you might never come back. It's been a crazy world here. Jelly Whale Emperor is shaping up quite nicely. But without your guidance, all of your crew's usual accomplishments have been a little shaky and nervous. We're following your blueprints to a T. I tell it has taken your position. I was a pretty good sweets designer myself, and I'm hoping to see this in a direction you will be proud of. <laughs> when you get back, you can tweak anything however you like. Didn't want to mess with you about because you're having so much made in me time. I hope you can feel all the warm wishes from where you are. The love is immense. We all miss you dearly. And with you, a safe return. Link for love. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Link for love, Judy Sapphill. P.S. How do you plan on making a consciousness? Only our most famous coin makers have ever been able to do it. If you pull this off, you're on your way to the Hall of Fame. I need to pause again. <laughs> 
Oh. That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And Dillagaff, I'm very glad you were here for the Christmas stream. Sea Jops, clear and raspberry juice in the Anomalous Flask. That is excellent to hear as well. Uh, had to howl at the moon at eight. What is this? You missed everything. You missed the tongues. Oh, God, I'm speaking in tongues. And uh, <laughs> Sam Wall with the super chat for two bucks. Don't ever give up. Thank you. I need all the perseverance I can with this. Boy, this is the world we live in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Tongues. <laughs> oh my god. I... Judy Tongues, but also Popeye. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I love how much I got you with Licks of Love. <laughs> I was not expecting Licks of Love. That was, I was, <laughs> I was not ready. <laughs> okay, also, let's. As a fun little fact, uh, her last name. Uh, Papil is a reference to uh, the medical definition of a taste bud. I don't remember exactly what it is, but a but papile I think is the plural. I think they might just be what taste buds are called. So, because papil a it with that word p a p i l l with an a e is papile, which is the yes. like, multiple. Yep. Hmm. But now that you've said that, I don't know what the singular term is. Hmm. Yeah. Doesn't truly matter. Her name is still a pun. Exactly. Her name is still a pun, and that's really what matters. It is. It is. All right. Final letter. Let's do this. Dear Judy the Tongue, Thank you so much for the go-ahead. I am certain you will not be disappointed. About Jellywell Emperor... I think that if you have the basic concepts down, it is hard to mess up. It is a very unique idea, but I wouldn't imagine a very difficult one. The hardest part is probably going to be its ability to bring desserts to life, but I'm sure you guys will get there in good time. Can't rush genius. My name isn't Brainy for nothing. I'm glad everyone is worrying about me. Is Mr. Ribbit okay? I would hate to think that I left him with hurt feelings. If he's still sad about it, please tell him that I didn't mean any of it. That there is a hug waiting for him is hug waiting for him when I get back. Tell my crew that I miss them too. And tell Polly that the scores are even now, and I forgive her. Love you always, Brian Harding. P.S. I think I found the materials to do it myself, but that'll just have to be a surprise, okay? And that brings us to the end. Yep. How and I just had a thought, and I'm going back in the teleprompter to check it. Okay. Love you always, Brian Harding. I wanted to know if him signing his signature, Brian Harding instead of Brainy Brian, is a change or not, but he did it both times. And Judy also did Judy's last name, Papil. So is there a significance behind that? Um... No, I was just supposed. I was just trying to give it um, the character of them. I guess we didn't see any uh, any letters before this whole the events of this chapter. So maybe he signed it Brainy Brian before, but question mark on that one. Because Judy did it, I don't think it's so much of a thing. But because he made a big deal about wanting to be Brian and wanting to be Brian Harding before, it made me think the name might be significant. Well, you put more thought into that than maybe I did when I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you familiar with the uh, book series The Dresden Files? Uh, sounds familiar. Don't know anything about it. So it's an urban fantasy series, and but it it is the series that taught me about the Fae. And how in magical realms, names are super important. You don't give somebody your true name because it gives them power over you. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there's a point where A, you protect your name. And there's B, the fact that changing your name over time, that will become the name because that will become how you identify yourself. Right. True. And so 
there's a little like, just because there was that paragraph talking about Brainy Brian and the nicknames and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that is a through line that I'm sad that I'm not going to see more of because it sounds like it's not going to show up. Oh. Well, I I didn't do a lot with name magic in general, to be honest. But you know, you can't, you can't attack every single storyline. That's just the first one I thought of from my experience. Also, I wrote this when I was 15, so. <laughs> I mean, this is, God. <laughs> that is, Lord, man, this is good. This is. Thank you. Like, this isn't, I, you did, if you had not told me that, I would not have guessed that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of the things I really like about it. Although, I do think I have imp- Um. It does remind me, though, right now my series that I'm doing is pretty, like, grounded. And it's reminding me just how fun it is to write totally off-the-wall stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just need to go wild. Sometimes you really, really do. So what's uh, what are you thinking about where this is going? What's your predictions? What's your thoughts on Brainy and everything? So, okay, so chapter one... He finds out that his idea has been stolen. Chapter two, he's banished to the tourist trap and he gets out and he kidnaps some kids and gets shot <laughs> in the foot. Uh, yep. Chapter three, it's funny, structure wise, because of the tone of the second section where it's like super intense, the fact that you remembered that as the ending is. Mm-hmm. Like, it feels like a climax, and it feels like a cutoff, and I get it. And then, all of a sudden, these letters make me think, but wait a minute, this is his concept for Vendafriend. This is the setup for everything else that's about to come. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm not fully worried yet, but I I have this sense of foreboding that, (laughs) like, considering how many chapters is this again? This is a 15 chapter thing, and this is chapter. We're in chapter three of 15, and he just had the idea and the mm-hmm. permission to start building Venda Friend with the two kids he kidnapped. And yeah, I just, I don't know what to think yet. I, I don't know what Venda Friend could be or where it could go because I told you before mm. that I thought it had something to do with Little Misters before I got involved with it. Mm -hmm. But if it has nothing to do with the little misters, then that thought doesn't stick. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm this set. This is a setup. And this is like at the end of, again, chapter three, I guess. But like in a real book, it's like, oh, wait, something's going to happen. And it's going to be so much bigger than what you have seen so far. Uh, I will nod to that. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes uh, yes I'm you're gonna, not ready i'm gonna see what the uh yeah yeah the comments on this one good <laughs> Ooh, ooh. while i'm checking in the chat you pick a couple comments in that that are good uh in the chat insanity major says that me and matt pat are the only people he can see they can see being brainy brian yeah, no, Matt and I are both the Matt Pat and I are both like that musical theater cringy humor dad joke guy. That is like <laughs> right up there with John Mulaney. Oh, John Mulaney's good. Like the reason I YouTube is because I see Matt Pat doing so well and I'm like, I'm very Matt Pat esque. I could do this. Maybe. Also, insanity major, uh send me a PM and I will get to you. Ooh. Insanity yeah, Major, are. send that PM to Dark Stuff. Get your skip looked at. That is f- fantastic. God, I love this community. Also, Long Door, I don't know if they're still here, but they asked, what SCP is this? And it is not an SCP. It is a tale. Oh, and someone answered them. Vendafriend. So yes, uh, to expand on C-Jobs' answer, this is Vendafriend Chapter 3. I don't remember the title right now. What's the title? Ah, yes. I don't get it. I functioned before. Mm-hmm. And so this is a 15-part tale series, and we are on chapter three tonight. Yep. And Joseph Anderson wants us to come outside because it's beautiful. It's so sunny. No! Yeah. No! Not going to happen. No! Stay indoors. 
I will not. There's a stay-at-home order. We have been on quarantine at Site 42 since March 16th. Note the, note the quarantine beard. Mm-hmm. I would say note my quarantine beard as well, but two things. You can't see, and also I've had this beard for longer than quarantine. <laughs> you've I had got that quarantine beard started early. You've had that quarantine beard longer than the quarantine, and this is my trying as hardest, and this is as far as it could get. <laughs> well, it, it's only been like two weeks, a little more than two weeks, three weeks. I don't know, honestly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because I got shut down on the 16th was my last day of work. Thankfully, thankfully, God, I applied to unemployment that day. So I got in before the rush. Hmm. That's good. How are, <laughs> what kind of good comments do we have from the, uh, Venda Friend Chapter 3 discussion page? Uh, well, Jen Shed, G E N. S H E D commented on a lot of these tales and uh, he's the last person to comment on this tale. And he says to paraphrase Kiki, the ferret sluggy freelance, stay good, Brian, stay good. I don't have a lot of hope on that front. I'll admit. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Says Jen shed. Uh, also TL three, three, three S says, uh, do you know I thought his name was Brainy Brain until part two? So apparently a couple people thought that his name was uh, Brainy Brain instead of Brainy Brian. That's our friend Brainy Brain. <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, yeah, those are the comments. There's one, there's another one that I also really, but you know what? I think it's kind of a spoiler, so I'm not going to say it. Spoilers averted. This is... Yes. We're having a very good run of me not being spoiled and getting good reactions at this. Uh, yeah, oh, I think so. Licks of love. God <laughs> dang it. Judy so the Tongue good. is unironically one of my favorite side characters in this series. Like, as a character as well. I just really like Judy. There's actually... Um, did you know, on the What a Wonderful World hub, at the bottom, there is uh, art of her. In what? Case you image of her. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm going to look because I all I remember from that. Oh, I'm a jerk. I've had this logo here the whole time, and I didn't have it turned on. What a monster. Oh, the Venda Friend logo? Yeah. Oh, whatever. I'll get it next time. Uh, but right. no, now I'm going to the hub page because I remember the picture of what I thought was Dr. Wondertainment at the bottom. There is uh, Holly Light, who is Dr. Wondertainment, but behind her is Judy the Tongue. Wait, what? Hey, whoa, oh, you're talking about the What a Wonderful World hub. Yes. I was on the Vanda Friend hub. Oh, sorry. No, the What a Wonderful World hub. Oh, God, the I love that splash page. It's so pretty. Thank you. See, everybody? What a pretty logo. And I think to myself, okay, wait, who are you? And why does your sword have a face? That Lady is Red. a different part of the canon. The Chester era, the Cornelius era, the Holly era. Do they know it's Christmas time at all? Oh, I'm so interested. Oh my God, <laughs> there's, you're, you're, this, what? What a wonderful world is so, so... Oh my god, her tongue! Yes. <laughs> that is... That does not do justice to the amount of tongue noises I've been making. Or maybe it's perfect justice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a lot. Um, I also, because it's never specified in the series, I asked the artist to... Um, make it so that the length of her tongue is still ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> you monster. So, you, you, so monster. you still don't see how long her tongue is in the shot. Licks of love. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, my lord. Yeah, she's fun. 
Let's see. Check in the YouTube chat one more time before we close out. 049 yep. can cure you during the COVID. Uh, 049 can cure you all the time. It just doesn't help. It's <laughs> very true. How dare you have technical difficulties unliked and unsubscribed? No, Joseph Anderson! But, no! But on that note, if uh, tell me how you guys like tonight's stream because this is the first time we've run it like this. We usually yeah. run through Get Vocal and it has that sound problem. And I guess the sound has been perfect tonight? Yeah, one sec. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you and then uh, unmute the stream so that I can hear Dark Stuff is going to check in on that for me, and I'm going to keep talking while he's muted. Um, because if you guys prefer it like this... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's so much better. <sighs> All right. So with this experiment, I am going to put a good hard brain in on, like, maybe doing the show with guests on Discord. Because if the if you guys are good on Discord audio... Uh, I like having the video windows a lot, but if the yeah. tech doesn't work with the sound and the sound is so important when I'm reading stories, it's kind of like, oh. Yeah, the, I I like the videos too, but this is, the voice is more important, so. Okay, all right. I'm going to put some thought in this week, but this might be, this might be a permanent setup, especially if the, uh, if the chat likes it. Yep. All, all right. right. Uh, well, I'm going to go perhaps play a board game with my family or practice piano, whichever happens first. Ooh, do the piano first for a little bit and then go play board games just because piano is art and make art. And I always approve of making art. Well, thank you. Uh, there should totally be like a... Not, you know what? That's an idea for another time. We'll come back to that. We'll circle back to that. We'll circle back to that. I'm here for you, buddy. <laughs> All right. See ya, Sherm. See you, Dark Stuff. Everybody. Thanks for coming again. I hopefully see you next week. Thank you for reading my stuff. It's really cool. I like it. Thank mm -hmm. you for writing good stuff and making a good show with us and coming to visit. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, while I wrap up this chat and drink the rest of my fluid and talk to the YouTube chat, mm. as we wind down, as we just sit and rap for a bit, uh, YouTube chat... Wonder what the foundation does during COVID-19. The same lockdown as everyone else, except for the people who have anomalously healing abilities. Because, you know, enough of the foundation doctors are X-Men anyways. The old school ones. Um, 049 to cure them. No! No, we keep him locked up because his cure is worse. His cure is zombies. I was in that article. I interviewed him. I know. Guy is... Cuckoo for Coca Puffs. Uh, want to borrow SCP 427? 427? 426 is me, right? I am SCP 426? Do I have this right? I don't remember which one is which. Ba -ba ah, yes. That is the locket. It's also a bad idea. It's also a bad idea. Most of the SCPs. Are bad ideas. I'm just saying. Uh, C. Jops points out the Discord would let you do video. So, C. Jops, I am working on new tech. I have uh, actually, Dark Stuff was in a video chat this entire time, but we only had the audio feed. If I can find a way to feed the Discord video into what I use for film, which is uh, Streamlabs OBS. I am certainly going to try this week. Maybe we'll run like a test hangout stream or sometime in the week. Because if we can get that to work, it would be baller to have the video windows again. But at least for now, this is seeming like a good solution for video or audio guests. Whew. All right. And uh, as a last comment, I will two comments I will read. SCP-500 for Dillagaff, yeah, it fixes everything, but, I mean, you can't get any of it. I read, uh, I wrote SCP-27-EX, 2700-EX, and that's one where he tries to steal some SCP-500 because they have it on such hard lockdown and because no one's getting any of 500. 
it's too valuable and there's not enough of it. Uh, I like to think that 049 inspired Overhaul in My Hero Academia. Well, you know what? With the mask and the hands and the breaking things, you know what? Headcanon accepted. Why not? Inspiration is a heck of a thing. You can change enough things. It's all good. And so with that, I thank you guys for coming to our anomalous broadcast from Site42. Uh, thank you very much again to do, 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 Sam Wall for being our first super chat in like two years. So thank you, Sam Wall. I appreciate the gesture. Uh, remember on your way out the door to like, share, subscribe, become a patron, all those kind of things. Hit the notification bell. That way you know when the streams happen because sometimes YouTube doesn't tell you and sometimes we have technical issues and go on live late. But you know what? We're getting better every day. And so thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed the reading. Especially the little Joker section in the middle. That was super fun. And we will see you guys in the next video. And now I'm signing off. As soon as I figure out which button to press. Is in... Da, 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 technical difficulties. End. We found it. We're ending the stream. Love you. Bye.